Ma chenga wura de eni wa berena so ase wa ti eme pai bo Hi viewers, my name is Dr. Quentin Collins Osei. Welcome back to today's um, interview session. Today is going to be a great day because it's something that I have personally been anticipating to have. Today I have with me one of the greatest lawyers, politicians and historians in Ghana. In fact, we cannot talk about the history of Ghana in the contemporary. We cannot talk about politics. Uh, we cannot talk about law partitioning without this man. Today, I'm with Honorable Captain Nkrabia Ifadate here at his office. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you. Wow. I'm so happy today to have you, uh, to interview you. In fact, this interview, if it's not for everyone, it's for myself because I've heard so much and I've always wished that I had the privilege and opportunity to talk to you, to know so much about you and also to learn from you. Um, these days, we have so many things happening in Ghana. Uh, the youth are thinking that life is easy. Uh, you can achieve success on a silver platter. People think, um, you know, if you, even if you are in the law practice, it's easy to make money and all that. Now, you, you are somebody who has been a politician. You have been a lawyer. You have been, a, I mean, a military person. And I know somebody like you who has been both a military and a civilian. There's so much we can learn from you. Captain, today we want to hear from you. Can you tell us a brief about your background? Thank you very much. Um, I was born in what was then a village. Okay. Called Jine Jine. Okay. That is where I went to elementary school. Wow. Until, by God's grace, I had CMB scholarship to attend Achimota school. So from Jine Jine, you went to Achimota? Yes. All the way from Jine Jine yes. to Accra? Yes. Okay. And that was 1967 October. Wow. So I came to Achimota 1967 October. Okay. I was there for five years to do my GC O level. Okay. And then after that, I did A level Achimota. Okay. So Achimota all together seven years. Wow. Then I joined the army. And then I went to Legon. Legon, okay. And I was in Common for I was a very noisy student leader. So you are a unit? Yes, I'm a Vanda. Vanda. <laughs> I was yeah. a chief Vanda. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I was, I was this year president. Okay. Of Common for Okay. And then a very interesting chap came into my life. Mm. He was called Captain Wachijan. Okay. Interesting. He told me he wanted to read law. Okay. But that uh, his, his, he was a soldier and he was busy. Okay. So he wanted me to use my law notes. Okay. For him to study. Okay. So that means you were in Legon studying law. Yes. Right after law. Achimota. Yes. You came to Legon studying law. Yes. Then we met. Bajijan, okay. So Bajijan became my friend. Okay. Every Friday, every Saturday morning, they will come from Burma camp to pick me. They will go to Burma camp and study law. Wow. Was That's he a nice. student? Yes, he was a he was reading qualifying certificate in law. Okay. At Lagos. Okay. Yes. Then he introduced me to his best friend <laughs> called. Oh, so if I understand, the children was a military person at the time. Yes, captain. Captain who wanted to study law. Yes, and you were a law student in Legon. Yes, and he wanted you to help him. Yes, with your notes to yes. study the program yes. because he was busy. You couldn't attend lectures. Yes. Okay. So the three of us became very close friends. Mm. And I noticed that they were that the the two of them were very intelligent. Mm. young officers in Ghana Army. Okay. And in those days, Achampo was the head of state. Okay. He and his Supreme Military Council. Okay. And we, the students on campus, we were very anti-military. Mm. Being student demonstrations and so on. Yeah. 
but the way I used to listen to arguments and debates by Bashija and Jeronis, okay, I realized that the military is not made up of zombies. Yes. They were intelligent, intelligent people. people in the system. Yeah. And to think that, you know, I was a young guy. How old was I? 24. Okay. I said, let me also join them. Oh. So I decided to abandon my yes. law no. career. career. So immediately I had my degree. Wow. And by God's grace, I had second class upper. In law? In law. Okay. So my I left Legon straight to Ghana Military Academy. Yes. Whoa. I'm enlisted as so, in take twenty. Wow. So if I understand, your desire to go into military was triggered by was triggered by Bashir and General. Wow. And as God will have it, one thing I must say, however, is that when I decided to be a soldier, mm. I decided to train physically. Okay. So, if you know Lego very well, <laughs> every Friday, I will run from Komoa 4 to Lego Police Station. Then I will run from Lego Police Station across the M1 up to Achimota Village. Then pass through Achimota School. And then pass through Gimpa. Back to Lego. All by yourself? All by myself, alone. What was your reason? I, I wanted to be physically strong. strong. You know, were you in the military at the time? Or you no, I was preparing. preparing. Oh my goodness, I was a third year law student. Okay, preparing to <laughs> join the army. Okay, and this paid off because immediately I entered the military academy, I became the steeple chase champion. Mm. And steeple chase is like marathon. Okay, you know, all soldiers, all officer cadets go through it. Yes, and the instructors were so amazed that. They quickly recommended I just me. I didn't even know you were preparing before. Yes. <laughs> they recommended me and I was lifted out of Ghana. Oh. To UK. Standard Military Academy. Oh. So I trained to be oh. an officer in UK. Wow. For one and a half years. This was which year, please? 1978. The whole of 78. Wow. UK. UK. <laughs> Sorry. Then I returned in 79. Mm. As a lieutenant. Okay. And just as I came, 15th May, uprising. Okay. Led by Rollins. I said, oh, what La, is this? You are your mentor. My, my party. We are your party. <laughs> so, the 4th of June broke out. Ah. Led by Bwashija and Jerry Rollins. Wow. I must, for historical purposes, I must take that I was not part mm. of the planning and the execution of June 4. Okay. But, you know, it was a short-lived government. Three yeah. months. Yes. When they handed over, the military intelligence mm. decided that, no, this boy, who was a very close friend of Rollins <laughs> and Bojia, he should be watched. Mm. So I was arrested. Oh, because of that. Because of that. Because of your alliance or association with them. I was arrested. Oh. And I was tried on a charge of mutiny, which is the military equivalent of treason. Treason, yeah. But the court martial, the judges and the officers, they didn't find any evidence to convict me. Mm. So at submission of no case, I was acquitted and discharged. Oh, thank God. But I was convicted of the offense of um, misconduct. Misconduct. And I was sentenced to dismissal from the army and 23 months imprisonment. Oh, my goodness. That is almost two years. I was in prison for about one year when Rollins came the third time, the mm. second time. And he released me. Okay. He gave me a pardon. He, he released me. Okay. And reinstated me into uniform. Okay. As a lieutenant. Okay. So from prison back to military. So I worked for the revolution mm. as a member secretary of the National Investigations Committee. Okay. And we were there after about one and a half years. Rollins got fed up with me. 
Wow. And decided to arrest me. Again? I mean, for what? For no reason. I was just arrested and detained. At a time when my wife was pregnant. I was in the home the second time. For so you were arrested months. for no reason? For no reason. Six months I was in prison. And you did not have <laughs> any sort of uh, reason to... I mean, of course you're a lawyer, so you cannot be arrested for no reason. So well, the military has arrested you. What, what defense can you... Oh, I see. So I was detained six months. Then I was released. Hmm. I was released without trial, nothing. And they just said I've been pushed out of the Air Force. Wow. So I was compulsorily retired as mm. a captain. Which, which was which year, please? 1983. Okay. 1983. Okay. I was retired in 1983. Then quickly, I went to look for my law notes. <laughs> I went to the law school. Okay. Then I was called to the bar. Okay. 1986. Okay. October. And uh, I came to find that my mates at Legon were now seven years my at, seniors. At, yes. <laughs> at the bar, including people like um, Mr. Justice Amegache. Okay. And then Amegache. And then my very good friend Charles Aibo mm. to be to Prehudu. Okay. Of Anfuega. Mm. We were mates okay. at Lego. But now they were seven years yes, ahead of you. My senior. Because you were the military. Yes. So I practiced law and uh, God kept me moving from place to place, mm. going to court and mm. so on. Until uh, the year 2000, mm. when the people of Brooklyn, they took a scientific decision. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They took a scientific decision yeah. that the next MP should come from Jinjiri. Okay. And so the people of Jinjiri said they only know captain. Okay. So I was selected on a post. Oh, I see. As MPP parliamentary candidate. And I campaigned for two years. And I won, I defeated Usua Champo mm. massively. Mm. And then President J. Kufo made me deputy minister okay. for local government. Okay. And uh, my boss was Kodjo Maribi. Yes. Who was my mate at Legon. Oh. And we were all in Kobo for. You were also a law student? No. Maribi was uh, the administration accounting. Ah, okay. And uh, but when I was JCR president, he was my treasurer. Or well, at Commonwealth. At Commonwealth. Oh, I so see. we were very close. You were his boss. Yeah, I was president. But you later you became his. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was his deputy minister. We worked together. And then, before in my second term as MP, he made me deputy minister for interior. Okay. And then later he dropped me. Mm. And then my problems began. Mm. Trying to survive as a politician and uh, going to court. Mm. Which I've been doing till now that I'm talking mm. to you as a private lawyer. Wow. By the grace of God. Wow. Wow. In fact, this <laughs> this 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 introductory story reminds me of your anthem. Um I think, yes. I think when you mention uh, Captain Kabia Fadate, the whole Ghana, they know you for one thing. And that song. I don't know if you want to give us Ah <laughs> <laughs> I say that song because the story I've told you, yes. the problems I've gone through, mm. especially when I was a soldier, mm. you know, I survived uh, three attempts at assassination. Wow. Yes. Yes. Jewish school, people, soldiers, some soldiers wanted to kill me, and uh, I've survived 66 motor accidents. Wow. 66. 66. 66. Six, yes. six. I've been arrested and handcuffed five times. Wow. You know, and I've been to prison twice. Mm. On one occasion, I slept at condemned cells. Mm. Meant for um, condemned like, yeah. prisoners. Mm. I slept there for 93 days. Wow. So, uh, looking at all these challenges that I've gone through, I tell myself, it's only by the grace of God mm. that I'm alive. Mm. By his grace, I have 
a very beautiful, attractive wife mm. and four children. Wow. My first born is an architect. Mm. My second born is uh, a law student okay. in London, UK. Wow. And my third born is a lawyer with me here. Wow. And my fourth born is a medical doctor. Oh, great. So God has done a lot for yes. me. It is by His grace that mm. I'm alive. Mm. And so for that reason, I think that I should praise his name by mm. the slightest opportunity. Mm. Serve him and glorify his name. Wow. He's the only reason why we are all alive. Yes. He can terminate your life anytime. Mm. Anytime. Mm. Without with or without notice. Mm. You know. So that wow. is my life for you. Wow. Well, I'm not a good singer, but I wish I could sing that song for you. <laughs> well, in fact, Captain, I think this is such a story. And I believe your story is going to inspire many. Uh, these days, the youth think that everything is on a silver platter. It's so easy. But your story is a testament that life, you can go through hard times. You can go through bad times. But by the grace of God, you can come out victoriously. So, in fact, you are a testament. You are a testament. I don't know if you want to give us at least 30 seconds of this song. Um, just to encourage somebody who is listening to you. Maybe this song will touch their heart or their life. And no matter the situation they are going through, they will also believe that one day, God will take them out. Mm. Mm. O de me na ya ti timpo se me ri che ya si da na o di e ju ma se manu e ju pu pu bi a ye yi yo a e ti ya si me ma ma sa ya ti ni ka na wa ya na be tu anu. Na wa ye uban ko biya Se lanka o ni pa O de ne hontu E wura de su Na o kena ni Me di e me bo ni di da Me bo ra di ni di me mani su achire aman sanyena if he say oye ura e prise oye ura na chere ne nani ubinti se onu oye ti ti nyame this is so touching this is so touching in fact I think the words of the song depict and um, more like explains your life story. God has really been good. God has really been good. Captain, I don't know, uh, the little research I did, I got to hear that um, you are one of the, I don't know if it is the whole of Africa or Ghana, only lawyer who has represented at the ICC. The International Criminal Court of Justice. I would like to know if it's true. And if yes, what can you tell us briefly about that? You know, there's something, there's an English word which is legend. Mm -hmm. Legend. legend mm. Is, it means stories, uh, glorious ones, and some fabrications mm. and so on. Mm. I was going to court here in Accra when I had a phone call from a lady okay. from UK. Okay. According to her, some Ghanaians in London mm. have recommended me to her mm. that she should come and see me okay. to go and defend her husband okay. who is for the Sanko okay. from um, Liberia or Sierra Leone. Okay. So I said, all right, she should come. So she took a flight, came from London to from London. Mm. I met her at the airport and put her in a hotel. Mm. I told her my conditions for going to Sarah Leon to defend her husband mm. and she met the conditions mm. 
substantially uh, deposit. You know, <laughs> you know we lawyers. Uh, yeah, yes. I'm not a Father Christmas. Yes, yes of course, course, of course. So uh, I took a flight. I went to Sierra Leone mm. to defend for the Sanko. Okay. When I met, went, I met a Ghanaian lawyer at the Attorney General's Department. Yeah. And I met the Attorney General, mm. and the three of us talked very extensively. Mm. And they told me point blank that captain you cannot see for the sample mm. the Boris government wanted him dead mm. so they were giving him terrible treatment mm. in fact he was in a ship mm. on the atlantic ocean and he was incommunicado he died in that ship you know he was in a ship like in custody so, wow yes so the issue of defending him was not a year no yeah. So I came back to Accra and it was at a time when the campaign yeah. for politics was very, very heated up. Mm. And, you know, Rollins made me a hero by oh. going to Seattle. Seattle is a popular town in mm. NDC headquarters. Okay. In near Berkum. Okay. And he said at a rally in Seattle that the MPP is sponsoring a lawyer to go and defend uh, a rebel who has been cutting <laughs> children's hands and things like that. Mm. And is it proper? You know? Yeah. So, uh, like a propaganda. it was a negative propaganda yes. against me. You yes. know? And uh, people were talking almost all over the mm. country that. Ukrabia captain is a lawyer going to ICC mm. to defend a whole lot of people. Mm. But this is basically what it is. Wow. Wow. <coughs> so interesting. I also had an information that you were writing the memoir or some scripts for Nina Kondra Jima Rollins. I mean, were you, were you having any sort of, I don't know whether it, we, we will call it work relation or any was it political or work relation? Was there anything like that? Well, I have a client, okay, a lawyer client who I defend in court, okay, who happens to be a cousin mm. of Nakuriraj Morales, okay, and Nakuriraj Morales contracted him mm. to write her biography, okay, and this my client said, Captain, uh, you are the lawyer, I have not. I said, very well, in those days, yeah, bring 20,000 and I'll do it. <laughs> so he brought the money. Okay. You know, and I started writing. So okay. I wrote the first draft. Mm. You know, and that ended. I wow. gave it to him to give it to her. To okay. So at this point, were you still in politics with MPP or? Uh, at that time, when I did the writing, no. I was not even a parliamentary candidate. Okay. I was just a plain lawyer. Okay. Going to court. Okay. And uh, making money. Okay. Okay. So, looking at your history from even university, you were close to the former president, J.J. Rollins, with uh, Bwachijan and all that. So, everybody should think that even if you want to go into politics, you should probably join the NDC. What informed your decision to be part of the New Patriotic Party, MPP? So many factors. Mm. One of them is that the way NDC, PNDC mm. treated me, mm. the way they sat me from the military, aborted my military career, mm. the way they wanted to kill me when I was a soldier. Okay. I didn't want to have anything to do with PNDC. Mm. And in fact, the man himself, Paul Rollins, I didn't want to see his face for anything. Wow. So me, a father, my hatred of NDC is total. You uh, know? Ah, I don't want to hear NDC. Apart from that, on a more serious note, mm. my after becoming a lawyer, and especially after having a wife and four children mm. and taking care of them in school, I've noticed that in this world, the best philosophy is development in freedom. Okay. Call it capitalist orientation, mm. democracy. But I believe that if you work hard and you sweat 
and you make your money and you enjoy, you pay your taxes mm. and you live in freedom with your wife and children, that's the best you can do for yourself. Yeah. And this dogma of socialism and whatever, whatever, mm. I don't believe in it. Okay. So I am an MPP man through and through. <laughs> my philosophy, my whole life, mm. I believe in the MPP. Wow, process. wow. And from the story, I got to know that you were even made a minister, deputy minister, under yes. Kufo's government. Yes. That means your relationship with President Kufo was too tight. Well, uh, should I say yes or no? Kufo, I didn't... Kufo, I knew him from afar. Okay. When he was contested. And uh, he knew me because of what I was doing as, as a lawyer. As a lawyer and so on. And uh, he told me because of the way I defeated Usa Champo <laughs> in Breku. Breku, okay. He wanted to honor the a conversation. Okay. Do, that's why he made me deputy minister. Okay. And I tried to serve him to the best of my ability. Mm. And if you remember, in those days, the Ministry of Local Government, myself and Barry, yes. we made it a hot ministry. Yes. We were always in the news. Mm. I visited every part of Ghana. Wow. At least twice. Wow. So I know the whole of Ghana. Wow. 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 This is so awesome. So looking at somebody like you, with all the experiences you have gained, both in medical I and mean, law background, in military and politics, now MPP is still in power. I mean, can't you be a consultant or even be put on a board or what is what is the current trend with regards to I mean your your political career? Is it a decision well, you made? You see, politics there are some people who do lobbying. Mm. Going to literally beg, beg that make me this, make me that, make me this. Mm. I'm not one of them. Okay. If you think you need my services to yeah. help steer the boat. Why not? Mm. I'll work for you. Yeah. But I won't go around begging anybody. Okay. Besides, I know that in this world, according to the Holy Bible, yeah, all power and all promotion come from oh, only God. one source. Yeah. And that is Almighty God. Yeah. And I've seen it happen live mm -hmm. a thousand times. Mm. People mm. struggling for power and failing, mm. and they are having disastrous ends. Mm. But those who wait upon the mm. Lord, mm. you know, they will be strengthened, and their their faith will be renewed, yes. and they are always fresh, yes, moving forward. Mm. So I'm waiting for God. Okay. Wow. In fact, it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful. Um, my last series of questions will be on your legal partition. Uh, quite a few days, um, even a few months ago, we've been hearing about cases that Captain, you know, has been pursuing in court. The popular Aisha One case, uh, we saw that it was you who were handling the case initially. And in fact, if we have to talk of controversial matters in Ghana, I think we cannot talk about them without mentioning Captain. Why do you find such cases so interesting, uh, even with this Aisha One case? And others, uh, I read also about affairs as Nega and all those people. Why? Is it like you are failed, or they just come to seek your help? And as a lawyer, you do your, I mean, duty. Well, let me say this. Mm. In all honesty, yes. that when I became a lawyer in 1986, okay, a certain senior lawyer okay. called Agbisi, okay, Mr. Uh, Nathan Agbisi, mm. he told me that look, if I Thank God you are now a lawyer. Okay. My best advice to you is that any case mm. that no lawyer wants to take, mm. when they bring it to you, take it. Okay. Any case that no lawyer wants to take, mm. when they bring it to you, take it. Take it. So for that reason, mm. and then when I was arrested by uh, Liman's government, yeah, and I was being tried by court master. Mm. No lawyer defended me. Mm. So no lawyer. Nobody was afraid, or what? Yes. Okay. No lawyer. No lawyer defended me. Wow. So uh, I feel personally, as a human being, yeah, 
I, I feel very sad, mm. you know, to turn away a client. Okay. That your case is bad, mm. so I won't take it. Mm. Or your case is no. In fact, I don't look at monetary gain mm. in taking clients. Okay. What I rather look for is, and in fact, I must say to the glory of God, mm. most of my famous cases, yes. I didn't get money from them. Oh. Except that, invariably, because I'm the lawyer, yes, so so, and so, yes. And that people <laughs> have been plenty years, you know. Yes. And uh, I survived as a lawyer. Wow. So, uh, me here, I am here. Mm. Coming to work every mm. day. Mm. And, um, you know, in the profession, we don't talk. Okay. That is, we don't announce that I'm a lawyer. Yes. Come and yes. bring me your case. Yes. I'm just there practicing as a lawyer. Yeah. And by God's grace, Clients come home, mm. and by God's grace, every day God brings me something to eat. Wow, <laughs> by His grace! Mm. Wow, uh, my last question with law and legal issues uh, you have been a lawyer since 1986, which is almost uh, close, close to 40 to years, close to 40 years. about 36 years. Um, or more I'm in my 38, 38 years. years. Wow, so what? advice will you give to long lawyers based on your experiences one mm. don't rush okay don't rush mm. and when i say don't rush what i mean is that when you get any brief mm. any case mm. do it to the best of your ability okay never rush mm. never rush mm. Do every case to the best of your ability mm. because uh, the the law works in such a way that all big cases mm. start as small jokes. Okay. You know that's what I've noticed, okay. and that's what other seniors have told me. Mm. All big cases start as small, small jokes. Mm. You know. Myself and my friend will be chatting about something. Mm. Will, so let's let's try this in court. Mm. Before we are aware, we are at the high court, mm. the court of appeal, mm. the Supreme court, court, and the whole country is talking about mm. it. You know. So be serious mm. with each case. Mm. Don't joke with any case. Mm. Either you don't do it at all, mm. or if you are doing it, do it well. well. Mm. Because you always benefit from it. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Last question under this uh, legal practice again. Um, now, there have been a lot of production of lawyers in Ghana. Th that's recently, I think, the number of lawyers that were called to the bar was close to 1,000 or even 1,000. And there have been a lot of issues. If you were to be, let's say, the chief justice or you had the power to make amendments, with legal uh, training in Ghana, what 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 would that be? How you train lawyers in Ghana? I well, I don't know. In fact, I haven't been to the law school since I left there <laughs> because uh, I'm not interested in that. Uh, yes, oh, academia. Yeah. Okay. But I would say that Ghana, we need more and more lawyers. Okay, we need more lawyers because it. I come from Boku. Yes. I need you go to Boku today. Boku. Boku today. You will get 10 okay. lawyers mm. who live in Boku okay. and practice from mm. Boku. Okay. You, even there is no high court in Boku. Oh, yeah. You understand? Yeah. So you okay. see that we need more lawyers. Mm. And you see, our profession is such that every sphere of life mm. needs a lawyer. Oh, yeah. Yes. You understand? Yeah. And yeah. every workplace needs a lawyer. lawyer. Yes. You understand? Yeah. And every courtroom needs mm. lawyers. lawyers. Yes. You know, so I would say that the deficit in lawyer production in Ghana is very high. Oh. It's over 70%. Wow. Last time, of course, I was surprised when the chief justice called almost 1,300 lawyers yes. to the bar. Yes. In my time, we were. We were one one o six mm. when we were called to the bar. Yeah. We were one o six, and even that was considered a lot. A lot. This time, thousand, thousand. 
300 or something. Yeah. But still, there's a deficit. Okay. Still. You know. And what I have noticed is that most people uh, enjoy being called lawyers. Okay. Without the the <laughs> actual <laughs> web of okay. of coming to an office, going to court, going to police station to defend the client, and you know writing long long letters, mm. reading is 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 a problem. Mm. It's a big problem. Mm. You know, but we need more lawyers. Okay, more lawyers. So contrary to the view of others that oh there are a lot of lawyers in the country mm -hmm. now they don't have a yeah, job and all that. Okay. Wow. Anyway, thank you. I think I will close books with legal partition. Finally, it's your family. I know you're a family man. Um, how did you combine all these things from military to politics to legal parties? How how are you managing with your family? To even have four great children, as you mentioned. Then your wife must be a very I mean uh, a loving wife. How did you manage? Oh well, I would say I had any Special uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. Except that I'm an ordinary person. Okay. I come to work. God, by God's grace, I make money. Go home. Mm -hmm. I give my wife chop money. Mm -hmm. I pay children school fees. I try to get a house where we will live together. Mm -hmm. And the family bills as they come along. Mm -hmm. I try to survive. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a normal human being. Mm -hmm. Going about. Meeting friends mm. and things like that. Mm. It's normal. Yes. <laughs> I understand. These days, a lot of people, young people, they go into marriage within two, three years, they are divorcing. And I'm sure you're a lawyer, a lot of divorce cases may have even been on your table. What advice will you give to the youth in terms of marriage? Oh, well, uh, what I know is that the, I was told early in life, mm. I think at water school also, that if you want to live long, mm. try and marry. Okay. Have a wife. Okay. Or a husband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because according to statistics by sociologists, okay. married couples live mm. longer. Okay. In this world. Okay. All over the world. Okay. Married people live longer. Wow. So, I would recommend that if you are young, try and aspire mm. to get a wife and to get a husband. Mm. And you know the the women. Well, I'm not a woman, so <laughs> I can't speak for women. Mm -hmm. But at least if you are a woman, any man who wants to marry, okay, wants a serious girl mm. to marry. Yes, not a flippant, mm. not a girl who is here to be a dead more yes. and but he was a domesticated woman, mm -hmm. a woman who would take care of his life, cook for him, and look after his children. Mm. Okay. And if you are a man, um, I mean, I was fortunate to have two sisters, okay. my mother's children. Okay. So I can assure you, going to the kitchen to cook something, I've, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. You know, so I need a wife who can cook. Who can cook and take care of my meals. Okay. If, if my wife goes somewhere, I'm, where is she going anyway? Well, <laughs> why is she going somewhere? <laughs> if she's traveling for the kids. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you should be to take care of my food. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll have to buy some food from, from the street. From the roadside mm. and eat like any ordinary man. Wow. Mm. So, well, I'll recommend that it's, and it's nice yes. to, to say that, oh, that beautiful lady is the wife of so so and so. Mm. You know, mm. uh, it, it's, it makes you happy. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And if you can point to your children, mm. and it's, it's nice. Yeah. You know? Wow. Finally, my last question. If every young Ghanaian were to be your own biological child, I mean, your own blood, son or daughter, what advice will you give to them? The youth. God first. Mm. God first. The youth. God first. Mm. Fear God and obey his commandments. Mm. And all shall be well with you. Mm. Fear God, obey his commandments. Mm. All shall be well with you. Mm. Um, 
the is sad. The youth of today suck a while, get rich quick attitude mm. and backbiting, yes, just to make it. But mm. what is the meaning of making it? Mm. The, you can't, how much can you eat? Mm. How much can you drink? Mm. And, and if you drink too much, you spoil your kidney yes. and you die. Yes. You, you understand? And I've seen so many people, including my own elder brother, mm. dying because of too much drinking. Mm. You know, so fast life of drinking, drinking, drinking. What do you get? Mm. Eating, eating, eating. What do you get? Mm. You just become fat and obese, waste your life. Yeah, you know. So if you are young, listening to me, mm. my recommendation is that one, take God seriously, mm. exercise your body as much as you can, right. and do the right thing, mm. and leave the remainder to God. Wow. Thank you so much, Captain. In fact, personally, I have learned so much. Uh, it was more like a prophecy when I said this interview is personally for me. In fact, um, the advice you have given to the youth through this interview is something you cannot find from any books in the universities. And thank God for internet. When this video is put out there, we believe the nations to come. Even when we are all dead and gone, they will listen to a man who lived, a legend. Honorable Captain Kabir Fadate, you are a true legend. Captain, thank you so much for your time. And God will bless you. I'm grateful. Thank you.